Hey everyone, it's Clay with Respect the Fish Guide Service. And today we're gonna to start talking about side imaging and all the benefits that it has for you. And I wanna start a series covering the, the subject of side imaging and eventually get into looking at what hybrids look like on sonar versus what white bass look like because there's differences. Uh, and once you start unlocking some of those tricks, it's gonna put you on a lot more fish instantly. So you're gonna have a lot better trips once you start learning what a hybrid looks like and what a catfish looks like and what a white bass looks like. Uh, so you can target the appropriate fish that you're wanting the, the target. So today we're going to talk about the basics. Uh, in recent years, Humminbird and other manufacturers like Lowrance have come out with something called side imaging. If you're a Humminbird uh, user or side scan, if you're a Lowrance user. And uh, what the technology does is it looks left and right of the boat and it shoots a beam out to where now instead of looking just directly underneath your boat as you used to do with 2D sonar or down imaging or down scan, uh, now they're shooting a beam, a sonar beam, ultrasound basically, left and right of the boat up to even a football field in length where you're covering, you know, three, four hundred feet uh, total. So you can imagine the potential this, uh, this has for finding fish whenever you're not just scanning a little circle underneath your boat. You're actually looking at a football field at a time. Uh, it becomes a lot easier. Your lake becomes a lot smaller. Uh, in a sense because you're able to find the fish a lot quicker because you're scanning a football field at a time. One thing you'll notice on your side imaging, in the middle of the screen there will be a bunch of dark uh, black basically. What that is, is you have your transducer here and it's shooting a beam starting kind of down at an angle and it's go going left and then going right. And uh, what that is, that black area is the water column that between the transducer and directly beneath the boat. Uh, that to me, in the way I would define it, it's kind of the 2D sonar territory or the down imaging territory. The stuff that 2D and down imaging see very clearly uh, is that water column, uh, basically. And then right at the start of where the, uh, the ground hits on the left and right side on side imaging. So basically long story short if you're in 40 foot of water that that water that black area is going to be real big on your screen and then if you go up in five foot of water it's going to be real small because the water in between the transducer and the floor of the lake is less therefore it's a smaller black area the water column is smaller in that instance one thing to talk about is whenever you're looking at your side imaging the stuff at, at the very top of your screen is what's happening right this uh, second or within the last few seconds the further you go down on the screen that is your history so the stuff at the very bottom of your screen may be hundreds of feet behind you and the stuff closest to the top is closer to what you just drove over one thing that's really cool about side imaging is a lot of times if those fish are suspended up off the bottom of the lake the sonar beam will hit the fish and then make a shadow, a sonar shadow, uh, behind it. And you can imagine it's the same principle if the water was real clear and you stuck a big flashlight under the water, the fish that are up high are going to make a shadow on the floor of the lake because it's going to block the light from hitting it. In the same way the sonar beam is shooting those sound waves, it hits the fish and that fish makes a shadow on the, the bottom of the lake. Uh, that you will see on the ultrasound, your fish finder. Uh, and judging by where that white speck is, where that fish is, and how far away and how big its shadow is, tells you a lot of information. A fish that's right up off the bottom, the shadow will be just a few feet away. And a fish that's up high, the shadow would be several inches away on that screen, indicating that the fish is higher in the water column. One thing you'll notice when you're driving around with your side scan is some things uh, on the bottom of the lake are gonna be bright and some things are going to be darker than that. Uh, what that indicates is the bottom hardness. And what I mean is, say you're driving and you're in a cove. The bottom of that cove that's in deeper water is going to be likely a lot darker uh, because the sediment washes down and settles in that basin area of that cove. Once you start going up the slope, that slope is going to be a lot brighter of a return for two reasons. The first reason is that the sediment washes off there into the basin. Therefore, this is dark because that sediment is there and it's going to be a harder bottom as it rises. Uh, and therefore, it's going to be a brighter return. It's a harder return is what I'm saying. Uh, and if you 
and get on top, you're going to be in shallower water. And whether that's going to be a hard bottom up top or a, a softer mud bottom, it's going to be brighter uh, than the bottom because it's shallower. Therefore, the, the sonar beam is going through less water, so it's gonna be brighter than it is down there low, so you're gonna to have to adjust your sensitivity. So if you're in 30 foot of water, my sensitivity on my graph may be something like four or five or six, uh, and then as I go up on that slope, it's gonna be real bright, and then once I get up on top, it's gonna to stay bright because that same six or seven sensitivity is too much for the 15 foot of water compared to the 30 foot of water. So now all of a sudden my sensitivity is on one or two. Uh, that is something to take in consideration whenever you're seeing that bright or dullness uh, on the bottom of the lake. Uh, other times you're gonna be going on a flat surface and it's gonna be nice and dark and then you're gonna see a couple bright areas and then a dark area and then some more bright circular areas. What that indicates is there's some rocky hardness there uh, or a harder bottom in those areas. Why is that important? Uh, for several reasons, fish like the change that occurs in the environment. That flat mud bottom is less attractive than a bottom with some rocky contours and some hardness. So if you're a largemouth bass fisherman, uh, for instance, you may not even see those fish because they're hiding in the rocks. But what you can do is know that that's a very attractive area. It's likely to hold fish. There's little rocks in there that's making that bottom harder than the mud flats. And therefore it's worth stopping and making some cast to see if you can catch some of your largemouth bass or perhaps your hybrids and your white bass are gonna be relating to that change as well. So that's uh, one reason in the application of knowing why it's a hard bottom versus a soft bottom. Another thing to get into is in recent years, uh, Humminbird has come up with something called mega imaging. What that means is the frequencies that they're using is a lot more high tech and higher frequencies than uh, the traditional side scan that came out years ago. Uh, basically the way I look at it is the mega imaging is really really great for finding a tree branch that's on the bottom of the lake or some structure that's on the bottom of the lake if you want to know what's going on as far as the lake contour and uh, some of those type of details of where the rocks are mega imaging is absolutely incredible for doing that it's a very high frequency beam that doesn't go very far though so you may only see 50 feet left and 50 feet right so you're covering a 100 foot uh, area with high definition uh, uh, type images but the weakness of that is it's not as good at finding fish you would think it would be if it's high definition but the beam is so small and so high frequency that it usually will miss fish a lot easier than if you use your traditional 455 I think it's kilohertz is the term versus megahertz uh, if you are looking for fish you want to have it on 455 kilo, kilohertz. Uh, that's a lot, uh, it's a bigger, fatter beam. It's better for covering areas uh, and it's better. It's what you wanna use if you're trying to find fish. You can actually look maybe 150 feet left and right. So you're covering a football field rather than just 100 feet. Uh, one thing that I noticed, I took a fishing friend out uh, and I went on his boat to try to get his sonar kind of dialed in a little bit. And uh, I kept driving over areas where I had seen hundreds, if not thousands of fish the day before or a couple days before. And I wasn't seeing any of the fish, which is possible. They can move, they do move, they have tails, they swim, they go everywhere. Uh, but I was surprised that I didn't see hardly anything at all, if anything. Then I realized that, uh, that he was on mega imaging. So I turned it back off to 455 and I drove over that same structure and found the hundreds of fish that I was anticipating uh, finding. So the point is, if you're looking for fish, you want 455. Folks, I appreciate your support. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, if you want to book a trip, go to my website, www.respectthefishguideservice.com. Uh, and I'd love to take you fishing and get you on some fish and uh, have a trip of a lifetime with you. Uh, stay tuned for more content. This is just a basics and a quick summary over side scan and side imaging. We're going to get into a lot more detail and show you what white bass look like, what hybrids look like, what catfish look like, uh, and hopefully that'll help you uh, put more fish in your boat at the end of the day. Thanks for your support. We'll see you on the water.